Hi, good afternoon to ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to learn lecture number 8, Autographic Drawings and Basic Dimensionings. So in this lecture, actually it was prepared based on the module learning outcome number 2, which is generate 2D engineering drawing of part and assembly models. So what is engineering drawing? It is a drawing from which a component is used to be manufactured must communicate all of the required information by describing the form or shape of the components, giving all the dimensions of all the features, and give information about any special manufacturing processes such as uh, surface finishings and what's the material. So as you can see in the picture, left hand side is unfinished part and right hand side is the finished part. So drawing view. Make sure uh, you, you must set a minimum number of views necessary to accurately show the information required. The Y layout in appropriate positions relative to the size of the paper. All right, so as you can see in the left hand side, actually this part has a constant cross sections. So we don't need three wheels just need one wheel right here one wheel <coughs> so this is another example as you can see inside has a cavity so you need to make a section view here and this one represents the cavity inside so type of dimensions you need to determine the size of dimensions used to describe the height, width, and diameter. Locations of dimensions used to place various features of a component relative to each other, such as whole center line to a reference surface. Matting dimensions used for parts that fit together require a certain degree of accuracy. Rules of dimensioning. Dimensions should be placed on drawing so that they may easily to read. And the drawing must include the minimum number of dimensions required to accurately manufacture the design. And a dimension should not be repeated. And it is not to be necessary for the operator manufacturing the component to have calculate the dimensions. Rules of dimensioning. Make sure when you do the dimensions, the dimensions, the same dimensions do not repeat. As you can see in the left hand figure, the dimensions are redundant. As you can see the 20, it appears on front view, but then it appears again on top view. And for the right hand figure, the information of dimensions is minimum and adequate, which is nice and do not repeat. So dimensioning conventions. Parallel dimensions indicating the size of the blade. Edges A and B are being used as the reference edges. Minimum number of dimensions required are specified. Use of descriptions of blade 3mm thick so that no side view is required. In this case, the part has a constant clock sections and evenly spaced dimensions line. So this is the example. So in your drawing, it has a gap, extension line for the uh, dimensions, projections line, dimensions line, and arrow head. Okay, group dimensioning. In standard practice, dimensions are grouped on the drawing. Do not use uh, object lines as extension for a dimensions. As you can see uh, from the left figure, uh, all the dimensions are on the same side while the right figure the dimensions one place at the bottom and another one place on the top so it's not parallel dimensions layout must in consistent and clear positions thus they are easy to read so a good dimensions such as shown in the left figure are grouped uh, on the left hand side and the right hand side uh, so a poor dimensionings where all the dimensions 
a place randomly. Appropriate view. Each dimension should be placed in a descriptive or characteristic view without dimensioning to hidden lines. So a poor dimensions as seen uh, on the left figure, the dimensions of 10 point to a hidden line. So you should place the 10 on a solid line as shown in the right hand figure. Okay, dimensioning locations. Due to the nature of manufacturing, actual finished dimensions of manufactured components are never perfect. This has to be considered when dimensioning features that require accurate locations. In order to enable accurate measurements, such a feature is usually dimensioned from a reliable reference such as a machine surface. This reference is referred as tantum. <coughs> So figure one is a spigot located from two reference edges and figure number two, two holes located from two reference edges and figure number three, the large hole located from two reference edges. So this is how we uh, dimensions a radius, fillet, curve, slot and sphere radius. Okay, how we dimension a circle? Circles on our engineering drawings are usually either spheres, holes, or cylinder of some descriptions. The dimensions refer to the diameter, and the diameter symbol is five. So there are five ways of dimension a sphere. Okay, dimensioning a cylinder. Positive cylinder, example, extrusions. Okay. Shaft road dimension in a wheel where side of the cylinder appears as a rectangle. And for negative cylinder, such as a extrude cut or hole, dimension in the wheel where the cylinder appears as a circle, as shown in the figure here. Okay, how we dimensioning a chamfer? There are three ways to dimension a chamfer at 40, 45 degree and also at angle other than 45 degree respectively. Dimensioning a hole, such as a cotton sink and cotton box. Okay, this is the symbol of a cotton box and cotton sink symbol. And five is the diameter symbol and four times the five zero point three seven five means there are four holes. Okay, what's the difference in between counter ball and spot face? Spot face has a swallow uh, recess, while counter thing have a slanted recess. Okay, example of dimensioning. Left hand side so a correct dimensions while right hand side so an incorrect dimensions. So this is how we group uh, all the dimensions. Uh, as you can see in the 16, 36 and 46 should be grouped together like this one. Assembly drawing. Assembly drawing can be used to uh, name, identify, describe and quantify all the components making up the assembly. Indicate all of the required fasteners. Record any special assembly instructions and show how different components are joined together. So in this assembly drawing, left hand side show an exploded view, while right hand side show an assembly view. So assembly view means every part joined together, while in exploded view all the parts disconnected to each other. So here you have a balloon to show uh, which part is it, list of fastener and bill of material and tidal block. So drawing checklist. It is easy to accidentally omit various items when creating engineering details drawing. Before passing on your work, it is recommended that you work through the checklist below for each drawing. So that's a general guideline. Okay, the first, do projections conform to the relevant conventions, usually first or third angle? Um, in my point of view, I think 
third angle projection is easier and straightforward. Okay, so have you used the minimum number of views necessarily to accurately show the information required? Uh, minimum three views, okay, uh, front, top, and right, and you can include isometric view as well. Are the view layout in appropriate positions relative to the size of paper? And number four, has the lead, uh, has the title box been completed? Particularly, drawn by whom? Name of the components when you draw the drawings. Okay, and what uh, projection you are using? First or third angle? Paper size, scale. If required, has the material been specified? <coughs> number seven. Check to make sure that there are sufficient dimensions to manufacture the component. Check that positions and size of any features such as holes are clearly dimensions. Number eight, no dimensions should appear more than once. Number nine, have the dimensions been laid out in consistent and clear positions so that they are easy to read. Number ten, have all of the dimensions lines been constructed with correct extension lines and gaps? Number 11. Are the arrow heads all in the same style and in the same size? Number 12. Has dimensions relating to a particular feature such as whole being grouped together on one view if possible? Number 13. Have appropriate line styles and light weights been used? Number 14. Have any surface finishing requirements been specified? Number 15. Have any explicit tolerance requirement been specified? Number 16. Have any required center lines, break lines, etc. been used? Number 17. Have any required general notes been added, such as additional general tolerances, finished specifications, or specifications of special manufacturing processes? And the last one, if sections have been used, do that conform to drawing conven conventions? Okay, that's all for lecture number eight. Thank you.